at lunchtime uh, today and tomorrow, again, in celebration of the 20th show. We have uh, free food available. Uh, I think it's going to be pizza. So uh, that's uh, available. At both the sack table and the uh, table uh, for info accessories, which is where the two of the classics are set up, we have hardware on silent auction. So uh, put in your bid for the hardware that's listed there. Uh, the bids close on uh, the two computers that are set up at noon tomorrow. And uh, there is a reserve bid, but it's not very high. So uh, is it Amiga 2000, Amiga 3000? Uh, the 3000 is an 030, the 2000 I believe is also an 030. Uh, and so it's, uh, and they've got RAM expanders on it, so it's not the stock uh, stuff. Um, and let's see here. Magazines are for sale back on the uh, Amiga Prez table, and uh, they're two for a dollar. I have 21 file boxes full, so please take yours uh, and leave the money on the table. Please, thank you. Um, our sponsors, uh, thank you to Aeon and Amok and to uh, Amiga Kit. And let's see if I can get through them all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let's see your MUS broadcast and our other guy. Uh, Hyperion. Hyperion, that's right. That's right, they paid late. Who? So uh, Hyperion Entertainment. Uh, yeah. that's not we, actually, we actually are, are sponsoring. Exhibitors uh, are in the show hall over there. You can see who they are. They should all have a sign and a table identifier. So please do uh, patronize our exhibitors. Uh, we charge them for this. They help support the show. And uh, please do uh, help them out. They paid a lot to get here. First time guest, welcome. Those of you who haven't been here for a long time, welcome back. And those of you who are regulars, thanks for coming. Um, we'll be announcing uh, Probably not before the end of the show because we don't have that yet set up, but uh, we'll have the dates for next year uh, in December, so you can plan ahead. Show schedule is on mus.net slash 2017 show schedule slash index.html on your device, whatever you want. If you want to know what's happening, uh, dial into that, that page. Uh, that's all that I have. Uh, Trevor, uh, it's your... Sure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. First of all, can you hear me? Not yet. Is it green light on? Okay. Can you hear me yet? No. Green light on. I feel so sexy with this on. Yeah. I don't know how I feel. It makes me feel really... Britney Spears. Important. <laughs> or again, play. So I wasn't going to twerk. So yeah. There you go. Wrong one. How are we doing, Bill? Better. Everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, oh, great. Does everybody hear me? I'm talking to... We'll walk over there. All right. Everybody hear me? Sorry, you were yeah, saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I have a picture. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you working again? That's pretty good. How do you know the name, Steve? I don't know. What's your sixth show, eighth show, tenth show? I think eight. Eight, maybe ten. Um, yeah. This is my eight, 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 eight. eighth show. I must be near eight then. 2010, yeah. we launched the Amiga One X1000. X1, yes. In yes. 2010. Yes. <clears throat> Time fly. You know, I had black hair then. I was yes. young. And, you know, <laughs> never mind. It's Time flies. Um, it's really good to be here for the uh, 20th anniversary well, of Amiga. Yes, 20th uh, anniversary for Epic. That's really, really good. And, Twenty years ago, I'm looking out all the faces, and uh, we're all getting a bit older. Yeah. But one good thing I've noticed going to other mega shows around the world—I'm not saying we're an old age show here—I've noticed that a lot of the mega users are a lot younger. So that was gives me a bit of hope yes. going yes. forward. And I was recently in Poland for the Ami party. It should be the could be the Ami alcohol party, to be honest. And they did, they did try to kill me with alcohol. They failed. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a great time, and the the average age there was probably in the thirties. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Ami West 2017, 20 years. That's really good. Here's for another 20 years. Um, I guess when I was a youngster, 21 was the big number. 
Yeah. 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 So we have to wait for next year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 21. Yeah. So, 18 was yeah. good. Yeah. 21 was good. So I'm pleased to say that once again, uh, uh, AR has sponsored Danny West and also Hyperion has sponsored Danny West. Yes. Yes. That's really good news. I'm, I'm going to wrap with Hyperion. I tell you. Sorry. But why are we here? We're here because of the Amiga computer. And who would have thought? 32 years ago today. <laughs> uh, 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 power of two. Yeah. And I noticed recently on the, on eBay there was an original plate, was it, for uh, um, Debbie Harry and oh, Andy Warhol for a Debbie Harry picture for sale? And uh, I, I thought, that's ah, pretty impressive. It never sold, but there was a big number on it. Oh, yeah. It's a bit out of my league. So we always forget, you know, I hear comments like nothing's happening in the Amiga world, you know, it's dead, or nothing happens at all. So I thought, well, what's really happened over the last year, the last time Yes. Well, <coughs> the last time we were still in that, the Amiga 1X5000, and surprise, surprise, it did come out. Yes. And it, it eventually, <laughs> and it's selling, it's selling well. So uh, I'm really pleased to see uh, users uh, posting about this, Amiga 1X5000, blogging about it. And it's really, really good. And I would say all of them here yeah, so far were really positive. Good. Did you know the Amiga 1X5000 was in a commercial video? Some of you do. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, a video producer in uh, Los Angeles uh, wanted to connect an Amiga 1X5000 for a futuristic advert he was doing. Yes. The uh, future. At the future. And he contacted me and I said, hmm, who, who do I know? Who can I call to send an Amiga 1X5000? <laughs> and Bill Bazzari actually helped out. Bill sent his this machine down to Los Angeles at great expense and fear for its life. Uh, and it turned up at the, at the, uh, the set. It was in an X1000. It doesn't matter, it's an X1000. And it appeared in a commercial video. So that's really good news. Uh, so uh, if you follow any of the stuff that Aon, that Aon does, we, we have a enhancer software pack which follows on the original Commodore one. You remember Commodore? They had the enhancer software. So we were just trying to give uh, extra features, uh, capabilities, and uh, drivers for, uh, for our hardware. Now, of course, our hardware is the big Aon hardware. But of course, we allow other, uh, we're not. We don't sell anyone, will we? Yeah. Yes, of course. So we allow other machines to use it as well. Uh, so there's been four updates of that pack since it's released. So it's been a very active development program. Uh, I'm really excited to say that uh, we've got Hans de Reuter here again. Come on, Hans, just stick your hand up if you don't know Hans. Hans has got to be one of the leading uh, graphics developers in the world. I'm not just talking about Amiga OS. And he's very modest and wouldn't tell you that himself. Uh, and some of the things I'm going to tell you today, I think will show that uh, you know, we're making really great strides in the Amiga OS field. Um, one of the things that uh, we've been really a continuing program from when we first released it, what, 18 months ago, was it two years ago, Hans, is Warp 3D Nova, the 3D graphics subsystem. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We now support <coughs> UHD 4K monitors, although the one at the back there doesn't want to be supported. There's, there's a bit, bit of an update needed to the graphics library. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, okay, yeah. fair enough, okay. To work on that. So it's your fault? Yes. Okay, well, as long as you admit that and acknowledge that, and then we can move on. Yes. Good. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on video. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's an uh, there's an AMI store coming out with AMI server, so these are things that are going on continuously in the background. So I'm, I'm really pleased to see what we achieved. Obviously, the Amiga One X5000. Uh, I thought I'd never replace my Amiga 1X 1000, but the 5000 has done it for me. It's a beautiful machine, and, it, and it's not fully optimized, and it's still a beautiful machine. So I expect to see that, you know, it can improve as we go on. Yes. I think our names are on it. <laughs> and our names are on it. <laughs> I talked about the enhancer, but there's been so much going on in enhancer software uh, that it, it's too much to talk about. So if you want to come and see the enhancer, go and see the Aon table, and there's two machines running. Um, one thing smart finger. It is a smart finger. <laughs> we had a, a, an Aeon Defcon in, in Cardiff, in Wales, uh, 
if you know, if you know what Wales is, that's in the UK, in Cardiff, the capital of Wales. They didn't vote for Brexit. Cardiff didn't. The rest of Wales did. So, handy. So, uh, uh, if you're pro-Brexit, anti-Brexit, I don't know. I still don't know which way uh, Amiga tip voted yet. Yeah. I know. Oh. <laughs> and for a small fee, I will tell you. Five bucks. <laughs> so, uh, we had uh, 12 developers turn up. Steve was there for Hyperion, representing Hyperion. We had Tony Wyatt, who's a core Amiga OS developer uh, as well, uh, in Tim We had a great time. Yes. We actually did some work. Oh, that was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a really good time, didn't we? It was a lot of work. So uh, I'm pleased to say that we now have 40 active developers and beta testers in the Aeon team. And there's probably a similar number of uh, beta testers, or probably more beta testers in the Hyperion team. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So some of them obviously in both teams. Yeah. But some crossover. Some crossover. Yeah. But it, it does show we do have a quite an active beta test group across the, the continuum. Yes. That's a good word, isn't it? Continuum. It's made that up. It's better than sphere. Yeah. 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 Amisphere. <laughs> 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 I know we're not really interested in Linux, Linux, what is it? Linux, Linux? Linux. 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 Right? Linus wants it. Linus. 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 Um, we do have an incredibly active core Linux team. They're, they're amazing. They're producing, I, I can't keep up with them, right? But, it, but it's it's really good to know that our hardware is supporting the, the, the Linux, power PC Linux. And actually, it's not just supporting, we are actually involved in the, the teams that are building these, these um, uh, Linux uh, distributions. Um, so, and, and getting involved in bug reporting and helping get the new kernels out. So it's not a passive thing, it's a really active thing that's happening now. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing. It's for every week, if not every four days. Yeah. Something. They, they, they are machines. Yes. And I'm not talking about the you know yeah. the machines they're using. That yeah. Team of people. Yeah. yeah. They're brilliant. Uh, one new thing I want to talk about is Enhancer. Obviously, we've done all these updates to Enhancer. We're about to bring out a new Enhancer, Enhancer 2. Um, has a lot of new features. It's got a new Radeon <coughs> HD driver called version 3.3 already. Uh, it's got a new archiver, unarchiver utility. Uh, the XDoc has been updated with uh, Dr. Library support. <coughs> Nothing more obvious when you start seeing it operating. There's a new backup and restore utility. And there's a new Radian RX driver for the latest uh, graphics cards, the Polaris graphics cards and, and related. Uh, so that's pretty good. But what's pretty really good. important about it? Yeah, this is what's really important about it. Radian HP 3.3 has 64-bit graphics card memory. It doesn't mean much to most people, I don't think. When I saw that, I went, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, but you're a developer. You understand these things. I mean, I'm a mere user. I want to know what it means as a user, right? Uh, it, well, it, it allows you now, us now to use the GPU, the graphics card's GPU, the RAM in the GPU, and the power of the GPU. Obviously, Walt 3D Nova is taking us down that line. We're now adding the ability for 64-bit graphic card memory addressing. Yes, so all of the memory. All of the memory. Just two gigs. I'll show you what that means in a minute, because I don't understand that still. It's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, do, do we all think it's good? Yes. yes. Yeah, but I'm going to say why I think it's good. Uh, we're optimizing the 2D performance. This driver now has 10% according to the developer over there, has had up to 10% speed increase over the previous drivers. Um, it already has Warp 3D and Warp 3D SI support, so that's good. And we've got an ongoing future-proofing development, of, of development program for the graphics subsystem. But what does it really mean? It means we finally smashed the 256 megabyte barrier. We can now use the graphics memory and we can use for, for graphics operations, and we can use the GPU itself to do the work. <coughs> so we're really <coughs> offloading this to the This is a first, this is an Amiga first on any Amiga system, right? Yeah. This, is, this is big news, so I'm, I'm quite excited about that. Yes. Yeah. I especially like the little. That, that's a nice graph. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, really good. So, which, <laughs> I'm pleased about that. 
I wouldn't have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what does it really mean? Okay. Well, this is obviously Sysmon running. You probably can't read any of that. But what it's showing is, here I'm using GPU RAM. I've actually got the Warp 3D Nova logo demo running in the background. Obviously, you can't see it. And I've got a Warp 3D Nova things were happening in the foreground, and it's using all of 33 megabytes of the graphics RAM, graphic, graphic card RAM, not affecting the, uh, the free, free memory in the graphics card. That's being used by the um, Amiga OS system itself. Yes, it's quite impressive, actually. <laughs> I, I finally saw it uh, a couple of years ago. It's got that background thing going, and it drags the screen down. Oh, it's, 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 all it's all over there, isn't it? And it's all operating yeah. smoothly. Smooth, yeah. 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 And that was on a keyboard. <laughs> no. But, as he said, in spoiled surprise, it also does on a table as well. So, oh, if, you, if you want to see a table running, uh, and I'll go on to that in a minute, with the same uh, Radio XD3 library and the uh, Warp 3 you know, but it's all operating on the table. Yep. And that, that's moving video, too. That's moving video. Yeah, it's not it's still. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to all my American friends. You know, I, I love that title, fake news. Um, oh, uh, don't apologize. <laughs> 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 We're coming to that. I posted this on my blog. Yeah. In a, in a, in a, there was about four or five, four or five uh, uh, Linux uh, screen grabs. And I had this Novia OS 4. <laughs> Novia means girlfriend in Spanish. Uh, but what I was really doing, and I changed some of the stuff around yeah. just to make it a little bit confusing. <coughs> But what it showed was the graphics RAM being used. Nobody got it. I mean, one person did. They all thought it was a new operating system. He wanted to say it was a new operating system. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's actually a Migro OS 4 uh, with the, the GPU, the, the 256 megabyte. Well, it, it, it uh, feels like a new operating system when the GPU takes half the work, or more. It does. It feels brand new. <laughs> um, one thing we are going to do is we're going to release a, a, a free Enhanced Software Essentials Pack uh, that will provide all of the uh, framework for developers to be able to use all the nice little gadgets and things we've been developing and uh, libraries, gadgets, classes, uh, and include the updated utility, and so they can actually use that in their own, own software. So that'll come out free, anyone can get it, it's, it's not restricted to anybody, you're all entitled to use it and do what you want with it. Uh, Amiga 1 A12-22 update. Um, well, you'll see at the show is the first public demonstration of the Amiga 1 A12-22. It's there, it's operating. It's looking good. Uh, we've still got work to do. Uh, it supports Red HD 3.3 uh, 3 already. OS 4.1 is extremely stable on it. Uh, it supports Warp 3D Nova and Warp 3D SI. There's still some driver work to do, and I'm going to pass it over to Steve. No, <laughs> not driver work, just, just say something about this. <laughs> so yes, yes, we, mm. we're still working on uh, audio, driver, uh, Ethernet. That's a, that's a Tricky, tricky, and um, it still needs uh, some work on, on the FPU emulation because, as many people know, uh, it doesn't have a full FPU on this um, particular chip. So we've had to do some trickery to keep the older, currently compiled software um, running s smooth without a recompile. Right? We're trying to avoid a recompile. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. Yeah, what, what anyone will probably do, what we will do, we will do uh, uh, the special SPE FPU and we'll recompile our software because you know, our yes. software is yes. so control. But we can't control third party software. Yes. So we want it to be fast with third party yeah. software that, that needs it. Because not every, everybody's going to recompile no. your target. Is no, it? No, but we can, and, but we, we, we don't want to you know, make other people do that. And so Hyperion is also going to be uh, putting an SDK out to so that you can compile to the SPE and all that. So uh, when's it going to be released? Uh, it, well, once those drivers are done, it's ready to go. 
So, because it's, you know, I'm happy with it now. And we'll, we'll do a bit more firmware work on the U-boot, just make it the same as the uh, X5000. Uh, and I think once we've done that, I think it's good to go. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, oops. That is actually a screen grab from the Amiga One A1222 in action. Just seeing some Warp 3D Nova. It's actually Warp 3D Nova logo, big screen running in the background. Uh, you'll see uh, some more rotating Big Mac cubes. You'll see a game being played, your final writer. <coughs> and I'm even browsing the web with the Odyssey. I actually posted my last blog using the A1222. I did it in Odyssey. Um, Odyssey, had, Odyssey has a few oddities about it. <laughs> I just can't yes, all yes. the platforms, but generally I was able to, I was able to do it. Um, last year we talked about Alice, and if you were here last year you know I had two Alice laptops stolen. Uh, I didn't delay the development, <laughs> but uh, we did, um, it did give us time to sit and rethink the whole Alice project. And uh, uh, Ken Lesler who's here somewhere, probably at the back, and Alex Perez. I've done some sterling work on that in the last year. The delay has meant we've been able to add a lot of new, lot of new features that are a function of updates in WinUAE. So uh, if you don't know what Alice is, it's a laptop incorporating a classic experience. Alice. Um, you'll see I like mnemonics. Yes. Yeah, you'll, yes. you'll see some more mnemonics in the middle. Oh, yeah. oh. So surprise. Alice, yeah. So Alice uh, boots uh, 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 um, uh, AMI kit. An AMI kit uh, installation, it boots OS4 Classic, and it boots uh, Windows if you want to use Windows. Um, and it boots uh, obviously AMI Forever under Windows, yeah, if you want to use that. Uh, it has some nice features, there's a looking, there's a rabbit hole feature in, uh, in the AMI kit, so you can actually run Linux programs through uh, AMI kit, it looks like it's running on, on AMI kit. It's quite a nice feature, I use that all the time. Uh, especially when I'm travelling. It also includes a looking glass feature. <coughs> you want? <coughs> That's just the version of Rabbit Ball Noah's Hall. It's not as, it's, it's not as, um, as good as, it, as uh, efficient as Noah's Hall, but it's, it's still pretty good. Uh, so that's available to buy. They're selling them at the show, and I'm sorry they're already sold out. <laughs> I'm not so, pleased by that. <laughs> I wanted one too. <laughs> so, he sold that instantly. Yeah, he sold that instantly. His supplier uh, uh, blew it. Yeah. It's supposed to be here today, Monday. So if you really want to buy an Alex laptop, put an order in with, uh, with um, Alex. Alex is the supporting the system, he's the supplier. And Ken, Ken is obviously, Ken Les is obviously the other. <laughs> we did actually have talk to Alex. He said, free shipping in the US. Yeah, free ship, free ship in the US. So now me. Oh, okay. Uh, it, ah. <laughs> it, it does come with... One thing about all these systems, you, you can screw them up eventually. So this comes with a nice uh, reinstalled utility on a USB stick. Plug it in and reset your Alice up to all the previous setups. It includes an OS4 classic license and disk. It includes a uh, Mega Forever license. And it includes... Uh, the enhancer software, special edition, uh, for, obviously for the OS4 class. Uh, so it includes everything. So you're getting a legal system, you don't have to worry about that. And you've got a nice reinstallation of your utility, which I think is really good. Price? Uh, price, go, go and see uh, Alex. It, just, it depends on which laptop you use. Yeah. Oh, okay, so there's not yeah, a lot there's, of yes. there's, And you, you can go nuts if you want to. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll go, there's no limit. Yeah. <laughs> but it can, it can, the one I uh, the one I just bought. <laughs> yes. uh, so I wanted that one. <laughs> I think it cost me uh, five hundred and ninety dollars all in with all the licenses. I was for. It's got the nice clamshell. Clamshell, it's red. Yeah. yeah. I know. Mm. Oh, go back. <laughs> Sold out in like. Half an hour. Oh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I was like, what? It sold out on Wednesday. We just didn't tell you. Mm. Oh, that's cruel. <laughs> uh, Hans is not just you know, a talented graphics developer. He likes to play around like most of us Americans do. And he's uh, created a do-it-yourself laptop based on the table motherboard. 
Uh, it's in the early stages, but what he has got is screens, controllers, you know, battery, battery supplies, and he's going to put it together as a working kit. And so he's, we're working with Hans to create you know, a kit that people can build their own do-it-yourself laptop. It's for table for us, but this could be for any laptop, any mini IT export. So it'll, it'll appeal to the, the, the hobbyists and the people who like to do their own things. Not oh, even how thin is it? The laptop itself, you can ask the oh, man over there. He is actually, here. He's actually bought a 3D printer to print the case. <laughs> so it's looking like fun. So Porsche, well, we all know Porsche is one of the uh, uh, Amiga's chips. So it's, it's yeah. What are the names for it? Also known as Paula. Yeah, also known as Paula. Oh, yeah, it, I didn't know that. Yeah, I learn see. something every time. Porsche <laughs> is a portable. <laughs> Table included Amiga. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> yeah, it's or something like that. <laughs> Incorporated Amiga. Uh, now, uh, there's always a. I think the best things about presentations are more about the questions afterwards. And the only shows I've been to recently, I have so many questions that go, the questions go on the presentation. Don't let us down. Right? <laughs> I always find Anna West questions. You can ask any question you want. Steve will answer them. <laughs> and I'll just start here looking. Uh, yeah. Do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> so, for the 20th anniversary of Anna West, when this show, mm -hmm. this is your chance to be, to ask the really crushing question of the day. I'll try to be as <laughs> sure as possible. you want to <laughs> So, please, any questions? Yes. I have several, so do you want to get you at the end? Or? Yeah, we'll ask one, we can come back to you. Okay, so probably the first question that everyone wants to know on the forums relates to the Amiga 1 uh, A1222, and that is what is Aeon's estimated price range for a complete system at this time? Okay. Uh, the question was, what is Aeon's estimated price range for the A1222? I think I actually said that last year, and we haven't changed our, our minds on that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and it's because I'm still, my idea is that we keep the price as low as possible to increase the user base. Uh, what I'm finding as I go around the world now, there's a, despite what you might read on the forums, there's a lot of excitement about the 1222 because it's come to a price range now where people think, well, I can buy that. I can try that out, I can buy it. You know, if, if it's not what I want, it doesn't matter. I haven't spent a lot of money on it. The Amiga 1X 1000, which I think is a beautiful machine, and it's a lot cheaper than the, uh, less expensive than the uh, X1000. X5000. No, the X5000 is a lot less expensive than the X1000. Thank you. Um, uh, it's still expensive. Uh, and so, even though I love my X5000, mm -hmm, uh, I think the A1222 is going to make a big difference. It's going to make it affordable. Mm -hmm. In Amiga terms. Could you remind everybody what that price is? Uh, well, I've been saying 400 euros, which is uh, whatever that is in US dollars these days. And that's for the system or the board? Yeah. Uh, it's debatable yet because I might subsidize the system just to. What a nice guy. Mm, well, <laughs> it's, it's not to your mode, of course. But, but obviously, the, that, in, that includes whether that includes OS4. It probably includes OS4. But we're still talking about that. Another question, please? Yeah, sure. I've got an X5000, and I'm not big into Linux, but I do use it daily, and I wouldn't mind having it as an option. But I find it overwhelming of the different options there are. And back when I had the X1000, there was a nice CD that was purchasable that <coughs> walked the commoner through installation of Linux. Is that something that's now available for the X5000 or will be soon? A, a straightforward, you've already got Amiga OS on your system, you just want to install Linux on another hard drive or something that's in the so, computer. So the question was, uh, with the X1000, there was a, a, a Linux installation on, on a CD, which you just stuck in and it would, you could run from the CD as a live system, or you could actually install it uh, and use it. I, I like that myself. Really did. Um, on the X5000, that doesn't exist at the moment as a CD, but 
you can actually get uh, the mini, S S mini SD card, micro SD card, with USB firmware, U-boot firmware, sorry, and Linux already installed, and when you boot it up, press the button, and go straight to Linux. And so that SD card already has the U-boot that's what is in my system now? Plus it, has, it has the latest U-boot, which I'm not sure when you bought your system, but the latest U-boot has extra features. Uh, and allows you to access uh, obviously near OS, Morph OS, depending on the Morph OS system, and and the and the Linux. And who is selling that? Uh, it's it's an it'll be an Aon product. We are doing another beta test program at the moment for another board <laughs> in yeah. the X five thousand range, and uh, all the beta tests will well most of the beta tests will have that card in. So they'll have, they'll have Linux option from start. Okay, so that's not for sale as of No, today. but we're, we're going to make it available to customers that want to do that. Okay, cool. So the kernel, Makes it easy. The kernel fits on that little yeah. card. Right. We put so it, you don't have to do extra. So we've got a 32 megabyte card, gigabyte card, mm -hmm. which has the Linux on it cool. and the U-boot. And it makes it simple. Because I think you're right. Who wants to go through all that hassle? Yeah. Uh, obviously, our core Linux guys do. They do it all the time. But I don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So 2018-ish? Oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, I think it's available now, so we're we'll able to sort it out. Okay. Yeah. So email you guys. And see yeah, yeah. Out. In fact, what I've actually got the card with me. I haven't put it in the machine yet. Uh, and that's the one that Ken Lester set up, and we demoed at uh, VCF Southeast in Georgia. And. It was, I wanted to run it off the OS4 mode all the time, but occasionally we booted into the, the Linux to show it running. So Ken's here, and Alex is here. Alex is the one that's been doing that for us. Okay. And Ken's here, so they're both here, so feel free to talk to them. Cool. Okay. Sure. Um, the Alex stack, is that available just as software, or is it a hardware, software bundle? Only? Okay. At the moment, uh, the initial, oh yeah, the question was, uh, at the Alice laptop, is it uh, software only or is it hardware only? Or can it be software only? Uh, at the moment, it is hardware, but we have the, uh, we have a, for, for several reasons. One, we can control the hardware it runs on, and in the PC world, hardware changes all the time. The models, even the same model as the hardware changes. So we want to be able to control the system. And I think, <coughs> Ken Lester's there, Ken. <coughs> How many uh, iterations of laptop have you used in Alice so far? Uh, at least four in the two years that we've been working on it, because everything has become unavailable. So, so what, what Ken said, we've used at least four different laptops, because every two months we've become unavailable. Uh, but I think the aim is that we will have Alice on a stick uh, at some stage in the future. Am I, am I right in saying that, Ken? It's licensing will allow. My understanding is we have some issues with licensing. Assuming we have the licensing with it, so we provide yeah. the USB stick with the correct licensing, yeah. I think that's a really it's a good possibility. Well, there are a couple pieces of it that are mm -hmm. licensed. They're not just out there floating around the yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a couple any, pieces. I have zero issue paying for it. I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it available? Yeah. yeah. So Instead of doing it yourself. I mean, that, yeah. Yes, Bill. A uh, question from online. What about the users that want to get access to the table for Linux? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, the question from online was users that want to get access to the table for Linux. They can. There's no... Go no download it. Yeah. <laughs> no, access to table for yeah. Linux. Yeah, I thought it's on the... Yeah, do they mean they want a table machine for Linux? Or well, they, they want Linux the machine, machine isn't machine? there yet. They want to buy one get the Linux. now yeah. to yeah. run Linux. Yes, they can buy tables for Linux, and uh, when, when we take the first manufacturing run for the commercial systems, then we will you know, sell to anyone who wants one. Yeah. yeah. Quick question. Uh, when do you expect to uh, roll out the next SDK updates from Hyperion? Uh, that's a Hyperion question, and, and it, for Hyperion. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, and when are the next SDK updates coming out for Amiga OS 4? As soon as I've finished them. <laughs> so I do not have a timeline because I'm doing it myself. So whenever I get it done. But I, uh, if anyone wants to help, 
give me an email. <laughs> I'd appreciate it because a lot of the software on there is um, GPL or public domain, so anyone can work on it, right? I, the pieces that are copyright protected, like the header files, I, I'll do those, of course. Yeah. LD, mm -hmm. another question? Yes, sir, I had a few questions if you don't mind. The first question is for Aon, and that is you've commented on the fact that you're working continuously on the graphic subsystem for Amiga OS, and that you're future proofing things as much as possible. Beyond that, which you've already announced, what about Radeon RX and the new version of Radeon HD and continued work through the Nova improvements, can you point to uh, any other software layers or any other initiatives that you're planning on? Um, the question was, apart from the Radeon HD and the um, RX, the, the uh, Radeon 3.3 and the Warp 3 over, and the graphics subsystem and 2D optimization, and, yeah, yes we are. <laughs> it's a continuous program. Steve is aware of the plans, so Hyperion is aware of the plans. So, uh, plans. so uh, um, it's not been done in isolation, uh, but obviously we're concentrating all our efforts on that. And uh, when we engage the services, obviously, of our preeminent graphics uh, developer who's there, and probably feeling very embarrassed now I'm saying that. So, Hans de Reuter. So, he's, he's working on that. So, but I don't want to give any more details. Okay. Uh, Steve, you mentioned a couple things I'd just like to back up to. Uh, one is you all mentioned that the X5000 is not necessary, there's more performance optimization that can be done. Could you share with those of us here and online what some of those optimizations might be and maybe even give us a type of timeline as to what we might expect seeing such updates? So the question was, uh, I mentioned some, um, even though the X5000 is wonderful, in every way, in every way. Every. There's, some, there's some performance optimizations we still want to do and uh, what are the plans for that, so Steve? Yeah, so of course, uh, We've got a kind of a minimal viable product uh, version of Xbox. Right? Um, so, for example, the copy email hasn't been optimized yet. Right? It goes all the way to that level. Uh, there's tons of DMA channels to use, not tapped into fully. Right? We've tapped into some. Uh, for example, I, I worked on the SATA driver. It's 100% uh, unoptimized, it just works. Right. And it's still pretty good clip, but I, I can go a lot farther. So there's all sorts of things. Now timelines, that's difficult because uh, it depends on what gets done first. Right? right now we're missing an Ethernet driver, so that's kind of highest priority. Uh, after that, I, I would say your, your copy mem is number one, right? Obviously. So uh, that would be released as, as an update. Um, versus another ISO, I, I think. But we, we, we kind of decide at the moment, oh, are we going to do a full update or are we just going to do an update through any update? Right? So it's kind of on, on the fly depending on the quality of the product at that point. Right? You don't really, you can't predict it. I mean, you can, you can guess what the date is, but it's, a, it's kind of meaningless. Right? But we're, we're talking on the order of, uh, of uh, months versus years, of course. Okay. That helps. It does. And lastly, on the lines of, of timeline with respect to Hyperion, we had been given roadmap updates fairly uh, regularly up until about 2014-ish or so. And then it's been very quiet since. And uh, is that something that we, we could resume we, so that we know what's coming? Or is Hyperion sort of moved to a different communications model, which is to stay silent until they have product shipping. Yeah, the uh, question was, um, the roadmap for uh, Hyperion is going to take us to develop the Mega OS 4 uh, and communicating with the community on uh, <coughs> updates. Uh, it's pretty good up to 2014, uh, been pretty quiet since. What's the plan for the future? Yes, yes. So, um, there, there was, is a quiet period currently because there was a change in management, so to speak, and the new the new uh, team wanted to keep things 100% quiet until they're done, right? Well, there might be another change coming, perhaps, uh, in that policy, so, because uh, I think uh, it was realized that people don't like silence, even if 
you think it's good uh, good for them? And it's kind of like no, no, that's not that's not good. So, so I, I'm um, definitely I could, there's winds of change happening or in that policy, uh, including the updates too, because there has been a lot of updates, which wasn't a part of your question. But, um, it's been pretty scant, right? Uh, updates through any update I'm talking about, right? Like a component bug fix here and I can't get it for months and months and months, right? I've got lots of feedback from uh, other developers from the dev side. Like, Where's the update? Where's the update? Where's the bug fix? We have to get back into releasing more updates more frequently. But updates also on roadmaps and where we're going. Uh, it, but it's fairly obvious where we're going right now. Right? My opinion is 1222. You know where it's happening, <laughs> and finish the X5000, I guess it's just a matter of when at the moment. But beyond that, uh, there's no sharing of information yet. One more question here. Uh, business model question. Would a bunch of pre-orders help your cash flow situation? Uh, right. That, that's, that's in, in the legal world, or actually in the world, we did. The question was, would pre-orders with cash help the situation? Cash always helps the situation. It's, it's not really true. But there's, there's a history in the Amiga, the Amiga world of, of you know, failed deliveries and money disappearing. So uh, uh, my business partner, Matthew Lehman, is hates pre-orders. He won't take the money because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to disappoint people or cause problems. I think pre-orders are good personally, but I bow to his his honesty and can't, you know when I say honesty, I mean he doesn't want to create any problems. So I understand that. <coughs> um, so, we, 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 it's a double-edged sword, we, we talk about it a lot. Well, we, we talk a lot about uh, kickstarting, Indiegogo, that kind of thing, too, pieces of, mm -hmm. or projects. Oh, I want to, but I don't want the blowback. Yeah, the blowback, mm -hmm. you know, if, if it fails, whatever it is, yeah. Question? Good question. Following on to that, what kind of opportunities are there for actual investment? Uh, in these companies? Um, the question was, what are the opportunities for investment in these companies? I guess these companies you mean Hyperion Entertainment or... Uh, AEON, uh, uh, I mean Kit, the people who are doing the development, distribution, production, you know, those kinds of things. <coughs> uh, you know, do we have some sort of uh, either privately held or publicly issued investment opportunities? Okay. Well, at the moment, they're all private companies, right? right. So they're not listed companies, they're private companies. They aren't funded by me, effectively. Right. Uh, Hyperion is a combination. Uh, Amiga Kid is uh, Matthew Lehman, completely. I mean, he's his business. Uh, so, uh, make him an offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, no, I, I was just wondering yeah, if, I know. if, 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 if know. the consortium was open to that. Yeah, uh, well, they're separate individual entities. Um, would they, are they open for investment? Depends on the company. I, you know, I can't speak for Hyperion at all for me. What about you? I can speak for Aeon. Aeon's open for the, for, <laughs> in my real business. <laughs> I, I'm in the I'm business angel, so I think with lots of startups. And um, um, I'm open for smart money. So, actually I'll take anybody's money to be honest in a startup. Because <laughs> that's what you do. But you really want smart money, someone can come in and they're bringing either IP or you know, capability or contacts. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so you're looking for resources? Yeah, yeah. Not just cash. Not, Not just cash, cash. yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that, uh, it's nothing to do with that, but uh, the, the, there's a number of X5000 on display today. Uh, you'll see one running Morph OS, uh, which is the first time it's been demoed in the US uh, in, uh, you know, in an open forum. Um, so, uh, Paul. Paul's there, so come speak to Paul. It's interesting because he is um, he's, he has no particular affiliation. Obviously, he's, he likes more for OS systems, but actually, he likes OS4 on the X5000. So that's really nice. So, uh, so he's, he's, he swings both ways, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure if that's I mean, red and blue. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. And, and along with that, Paul Resendez is a great recapping technician. If you have a classic board that needs recapped, I've had several done by him. It's bulletproof. So talk to him about that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he does, what's uh, that business called? Uh, and be, be gentle with ASO. him. 
Asa, be gentle with him. He's just, he had an operation about a week ago to remove his gallbladder. He still came down your west because he didn't want to miss it. That's, so, he's that's, tough. That's, that's amazing. He's tough. <laughs> uh, one last question. Oh, sorry. Two last questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just on the laptop, so will the touch screen be a possibility or something you can put it Give me a laptop. With the sorry, the first, the first, question, the first question was, uh, uh, will touch screen be available on a laptop? Um, That's an Alex question, really. It is, yeah. No, I no, no, mean on the on the do it yourself, do it yourself laptop or the Alice. Well, probably either, because right? I to me the Nika was always the most advantage of the computer as far as I was concerned mm -hmm. back twenty years. So to not have it like the PCs have it now, but Mac is just starting to dabble in it, in it, which I find to be funny because they're using the ones top of line. Mm -hmm. But I think the media should. Get it in at least as something you can order. And uh, as an option. I, I know one of the devs a few uh, many years ago had a touch screen driver. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, exists yeah. Yeah. on the Amigo West side. Of things. Personally, yeah, I hate side. touch screens. I hate greasy fingerprints all over my laptop. That's me, right? Yeah. But I know people like to use the tablets and things. Yeah. All that so it's obviously mm -hmm. take back to consideration. It's, it's, it's more of a software problem than a hardware yeah. problem. Yeah. Each of your variants now, does it have a driver or a way to use that touchscreen? Like the hard, hardware will do it, but. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Because Alice like, is pretty complex. Right? So <laughs> well, at least on the one you can build yourself would be nice if you could yeah. order that as, a, as an option. Oh, I'm sure Alex will order anything for as an option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we have one more question over here, that's the last one. Yeah, so for on the new Radeon 3.3, mm. uh, I don't know the, you know the chipset that you talked about and what model cards that tells us we can Right. So what uh, AMD model cards? At the cards? moment, it's, it's the same model for Walk 3D Nova. So it's, a, it's the HD 7 series, and it's the R, you know, R7 series, uh, R9 series. Okay, so, so not all, the one, all the ones that are compatible with Nova at the moment. Yeah. So there's no newer cards that we can no, uh, no. The RX, the RX cards, that'll be the next one. Depends what you mean by new. Uh, well, for example, right now I think the R9 series is kind of like the highest. I think that's end of line. Yeah. So that those are the only cards I know yes. about. So I'm not familiar with RX series. That's what's coming up now. That's what's coming up now. Okay, so, so the 3.3 will support 10. RX cards. No, the RX driver will support the RX cards. Okay. But uh, the man's at the back there. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> go and see Hans. Give him all the difficult questions and make sure we get it right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for listening to Steve and I. Yes. <laughs>